Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Tracy Rung, and I'm one of the co-chairs of the CAPC Patient Safety Collaborative. And it's uh, my pleasure to welcome you today to our November edition. And the topic of our presentation, the challenge of turning patient safety uh, education into practice. Uh, um, unfortunately, my uh, my other co-chair, uh, Darlene Bolivar, couldn't be here with us today, so it will be myself and uh, Lisa, the, the CAPSI patient safety guru, um, taking you through today's presentation. But um, in the before we get into the actual presentation itself, I'd like to pass it over, the mic over to uh, CAPSI's uh, president and CEO, Elaine Orvine, who will just give you a little bit of an update on uh, where things are at. Over to you, Elaine. Thanks, Tracy, and thanks, Lisa. Good morning, everybody. Um, and I'm delighted uh, with the November um, Patient Safety Collaborative webinar and our and our and our series continuing throughout uh, throughout this year. I just wanted to thank all the members, thank and congratulate all the members of the CAFC Patient Safety Collaborative, all of our partners, um, for your participation and and planning of our 2012 Patient Safety Symposium, uh, which took place in, um, obviously as part of CAFC's annual conference just a few weeks ago in, uh, in the beautiful city of Vancouver. Um, always want to take an opportunity to recognize our Vancouver host as well. Our, pa our National Patient Safety Symposium this year was entitled, I Play for Patient Safety innovation and integration using simulation featuring the Canadian Patient Safety Institute 2012 lecture. Our speakers, our outstanding speakers, were Dr. Deborah uh, Trevino. Uh, Deborah is the Associate Professor in the School of Nursing at York University, as well as Dr. Vince Grant, who is Associate Professor at the Department of Pediatrics at the University of Calgary and the Alberta Children's Hospital. I think it's fair to say that they provided all delegates with just an outstanding presentation. It was a, an absolute collective leadership opportunity from both Vince and Deborah. And uh, I would invite all our collaborative members who were not able to attend the conference to visit CAFC's uh, conference website. And, uh, and that presentation is up for you to view. and. Uh, and share with share with other colleagues. Uh, so again, I, I just want to acknowledge our speakers and our patient safety collaborative for the leadership in helping us to plan for this year's event. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is there was something very very special that happened at CAFC's conference this year, and in fact, it was our two patient safety collaborative co-chairs, uh, Tracy Wrong. Um, who is the director, who is our co-chair, but also the director of patient safety and quality at the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario in Ottawa, and our uh, second co-chair, uh, Darlene Bolivar, also director of patient safety and quality at the IWK Health Center in Halifax, who were presented with CAFC's 2012 Contribution to Child Health Award at this year's awards luncheon. For those of you who may not know, this is this is a surprise for our recipients each year, and the announcement is made for the first time, actually at the conference. Uh, Tracy, uh, I just want to extend our congratulations and appreciation to you one more time. And uh, although Darlene is not with us on the line today, I want to extend the very same sentiments and congratulate Darlene, I know, um, and Tracy on behalf of all of us. Uh, thanks again, and I'll uh, turn things back to you, Tracy. Thank you, Elaine. That was very sweet of you to uh, take us back down that very surprising and very honorable path. That was a, a fun moment at, Ca at the CAFC conference, particularly for Darlene and I. Um, I do want to point out that this is a patient safety collaborative, and so any accolades that Darlene and I received, we certainly share with the collaborative because really it's these calls and the conversations that we have that um, made it really easy for us to, to do our job. And one thing that I didn't say, and I know Darlene and I didn't say at the time when we received the award, 
is that, boy, golly, we couldn't do this without Lisa Stromquist, um, our, as I mentioned, our patient safety guru at the CAPC office, because really, I, you know, we would probably have a pretty funny conversation without any slides and any technology, and she keeps us on task. So um, sharing it with the collaborative in general, and, uh, and, and special kudos to Lisa before I actually let that one go one more time. But thanks, Elaine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so uh, moving on to the topic of today's uh, collaborative call, we are going to build on a conversation that actually started at the CAFC Patient Safety um, uh, Collaborative uh, presentation at, in Vancouver. Um, some of these, if you were actually at the presentation in Vancouver, some of the slides will look familiar, but we're going to spend some more time in talking about how the collaborative can actually take some of the work done to date and, um, and really sort of make it more part of our, our actual day-to-day -day conversation and make it more about reality. So uh, bear with us if some of the slides look familiar. We will get into more of the meat of the conversation uh, as we work through the presentation today. So we are going to be talking about how we take the education or the, CAF, the CPSI patient safety competencies framework and take that educational document and put it into practice. Um, we're going to focus a little bit on some of the historic pieces that have been done around um, moving that patient safety curricula into the Canadian Pediatric Residency Programs. And then we'll talk about how we actually pulled it together um, and started made, making it more about the, the practice itself and the, the eventual development of the CAFC Patient Safety uh, Competencies Challenge. So uh, that's sort of our agenda for today. Really, um, if you're not familiar with the uh, safety competencies document, I would actually uh, suggest that you take a little bit of time to visit the CPSI website and uh, have a look at the actual uh, information that's available on that site. Uh, the CPSI Education and Professional Development Advisory Committee spearheaded the initiative and the development of these competencies back in early 2007. And in partnership with the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons, they worked to coordinate uh, and facilitate the development of a, um, a framework uh, via a professional and national steering committee. And this framework had six core competencies or domains that uh, were suitable for all healthcare professionals, although it, it certainly initiated in the uh, in the physicians realm of the health, and so just to sort of for your benefit, seeing it there, um, the domains of course were the the uh, contributing to a culture of patient safety, which we all know is a very interesting ship to try and steer, um, working in teams for patient safety, how to communicate effectively, communication being at the root cause of so many incidents, um, managing safety risks. Uh, and certainly uh, optimizing the uh, the environment or the human and environmental factors uh, that impact patient safety, and then our ability to recognize, respond, and and talk about or disclose adverse events. So those six pieces of the puzzle were the the essential domains around the safety competencies, and um, the competencies themselves uh, lend a really interesting framework for us to sort of talk about the work that we could be doing even at CAFC moving forward. So to move on and talk a little bit more about the actual education pieces, I'm going to actually ask Lisa to talk about where the pediatric chairs uh, first started to work with the competencies, and then uh, we'll come back to the, the safety competencies challenge in just a minute. So over to you, Lisa. All righty. So um, I had the pleasure of working with uh, the pediatric chairs of Canada on a project a few years ago. Um, so back in June of 2008, uh, the Pediatric Chairs of Canada uh, agreed to build education uh, around uh, patient safety, a standard education program with, that they could share through all of uh, their programs. And so in January 2009, the work began with a grant from CPSI, and uh, they developed um, a patient safety curriculum based on the six domains of the uh, of the safety competencies and they worked uh, with a group of uh, the program directors uh, the the chairs there was some representation of the chairs and uh, educators and uh, patient safety experts all worked together to develop this uh, curriculum and uh, then there was you know the challenges of actually sharing this curriculum and making it easily accessible 
So uh, with a second grant from CPSI, uh, uh, they launched the curriculum on the go. So it's a community of practice, which I will show you a little bit later. Um, it's also on the Knowledge Exchange Network. And it's, um, uh, I'll, I'll go through all the details of it with you there, but it is a, a standard curriculum that is used um, by all of the, um, the um, 16 programs for pediatric residency in Canada. They all have access to it and uh, they've made contributions to it and they use the different materials from it. So it was quite a collaborative effort and uh, again it was using the, uh, the safety competencies framework. So right now uh, CPSI in, um, has launched a, a pretty interesting uh, project uh, they've developed a, an e-mapping tool that helps um, 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 faculties um, map their uh, their curriculum to the safety competencies. Um, uh, well, to the safety competencies, and right now the safety competencies overlap with the. Um, Canadian Interprofessional Health Collaborative's uh, competencies as well. And I think all faculties are being encouraged to sort of incorporate those. So in the background, when they're mapping to the safety competencies, it maps to those interprofessional, uh, interprofessional competencies as well. And um, pilot uh, pro projects have been going on in pharmacy, medicine, and nursing. And uh, they've been able to... Um, modify the mapping so that as well as mapping to the interprofessional competencies, the safety competencies, they're also mapping it to educational outcomes of the particular program. So, um, you know, the faculties of pharmacy, the faculties of medicine, and the faculties of nursing. So, um, so it's being, um, and to the CanMeds program as well for, for medicine. So these are sort of just an interesting thing in the background for you to understand that um, many of the faculties, many of the professions are using this particular framework as a basis for their education and making sure that they're hitting all of those particular competencies. So what we've wanted to do is see, okay, over the last couple of years people are working towards this in education. How is this actually relating to practice? And it might not come out for a couple of years, but we just need to know where we are. So back to Tracy. So knowing that that work was going on sort of uh, behind the scenes with the, the competency framework itself, uh, it was because of our, our very special relationship that we have with CPSI in, in uh, their support and encouragement of the CAPC Patient Safety Collaborative, uh, what we were able to do was with the support of the CPSI and endorsement from this collaborative, because we had used this on calls uh, trying to understand it, um, we started up a pan-Canadian demonstration project. Oops, just lost my screen there. Okay. Um, and that was implemented in 2011. And the, the purpose was to sort of really um, start to engage our, our own community in understanding this, the current state of practice in relation to the competencies themselves. Because, you know, we, we are all doing a lot of work around patient safety, and we just kind of wanted to get a sense of could we really understand what each of us was doing in our work environments as it related to this framework. And I think that we all had that commitment that we wanted to change, to, to support a change in culture, practice, and policy, and then that would ultimately lead to positive health outcomes for the child and youth population. So really what we were, were hoping to do was to sort of take all of those individual pieces, study them a bit, and then put the pieces back together and sort of get a good understanding of what's going on in the pediatric healthcare community with respect to each of those puzzle pieces. So what did it really look like at the end of the day? So now we're going to, I'll flip it back to uh, Lisa who will talk, take us through the polls. We just have two questions that we wanted to talk about. Lisa, do you want to ask the questions or do you want sure. to? Sure. So poll one is, do you use the CPSI safety competencies as a foundation for any of your patient safety programs? So have you created a matrix linking the competencies to your patient safety plan? So you can choose
just give a few uh, a few seconds for people to uh, make their choices. This is the part of the webinar that I always want to sing a song. <laughs> Getting, getting lots of votes there, Lisa. We're getting a pretty even. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to close the poll now. And Tracy, you should probably see the answers up there. So, hmm, not three, oh, four, there. We go. Forty-seven percent yeah. said yes. Wow, interesting. So, th so that's yeah. that's not that surprising for me actually that that there's about half and then you know a good number are no or don't know and I think that that's probably pretty reasonable the the competencies themselves although they've been really a around uh, since the latter part of the previous decade they ha they are in the process of being used to certain degrees and I think through our previous work with the CAPSI Patient Safety Collaborative. We certainly started to raise some awareness about the competencies, and people have discovered them um, through various venues as a really useful tool. Um, but really, this is a, a very specific question about, you know, have you kind of used the framework itself and tied it to any patient safety framework that you're using within your own organization? Maybe part of the answer for the no people is that um, they don't actually have a patient safety framework, and so that's even just knowing about these competencies gives you a bit of that somewhere to start and that's a, a good thing to have. So not totally surprising answers from my perspective, um, but I think that it's it's interesting to see that of the very over 40 lines that we have, that we have at least 47% uh, of them that actually have sort of started to make that link. That's kind of interesting. Now we'll let Lisa bring up the second poll. So, and have you used any of the concepts from the CPSI safety competencies in any specific safety processes? So, you know, defining roles and responsibilities for patient safety, involving human factors, engineering uh, process redesign, or implementing a patient safety reporting system. Whoops. So even if you haven't linked the framework to your own patient safety program or plans, um, are you are you sort of able to join the dots between the competencies and any of the processes that you actually are using in your organization? <clears throat> All right, so I will uh, close the poll now and share the results. Okay. And so what might be expected is that um, as, uh, as we start to learn bits and pieces or we focus on even just one of those areas, even around safety reporting systems or seeing the link between um, accreditation and um, putting the, the importance of patient safety into job descriptions, uh, you can start to see that at least the competency uh, um, concepts are starting to be rolled out into institutions. And for those that aren't quite yet doing that, um, it could be that you're not even familiar with the patient safety competencies um, and uh, are probably online today and wanting to know more about it, which is certainly what we're going to start to do because, boy, have we got some great info to show you on our camp, our Knowledge Exchange Network. So it sort of goes to show you what that there's some really great information in the competencies, um, but taking the framework uh, to an actual higher level is probably not something that's being done across the board yet. But maybe we'll do this poll in a couple of years and find out that our answers to question one are even uh, uh, further along. So as far as looking at the challenge, really what we wanted to do was to raise awareness of the CPSI competencies framework. And, um, and it's sort of evident in the poll itself that some areas within the pediatric community are aware and some are still learning about it. The, um, we then wanted to highlight some current practices that happen across our centers because that's what we're here for is to learn about what various people are doing. But you know if you miss a call and you don't get to hear the videotape part of it or the, the audio tape piece of it, 
then where can you go to to find out what somebody might be doing in any given competency uh, that you wanted to focus on? And that's where the challenge really came about. We wanted to map our current delivery practices to each of the safety competencies domains so that anybody that's part of the collaborative that wanted to jump onto the Knowledge Exchange Network would be able to get some examples, have some contacts, and be able to sort of see the kinds of things that might be um, relevant to any one of those six domains. And as a result, our goal was to develop a national based, a national web based resource that we could go to at any particular time. <clears throat> so what we did. So we had uh, seven organizations that mapped their practices and we had representation from tertiary community and the rehab uh, environment for pediatrics. And uh, those participating organizations were Alberta Children's Hospital in Calgary, TO here in Ottawa, Health Sciences North in Sudbury, Colin Bloorview uh, Children's Rehab in Toronto, IWK uh, Health Center in Halifax, Stollery Children's Hospital in Edmonton, and St. Joseph's Healthcare in, uh, Health Center in Toronto. So you can see that there was a good variety of, of uh, pediatric uh, players that participated in our uh, our phase one or our January to December 2011 uh, piece of this. And what we essentially created was this large, uh, 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 it was kind of like an Excel, set, uh, Excel spreadsheet really, but a, a sort of a large database that we actually um, grouped all of our work um, into each of the competencies. And of course those are the six that are uh, listed below. We had actually up to 150 key and enabling competencies that came out of that, of those, and we actually put all of our project, our work aligned with that. And what we came out of phase one with was this feeling that, yeah, patient safety is a high priority across the whole community. So it didn't matter if you're tertiary, community hospital, or a rehab hospital, lots of programs were starting to really get their wheels going around patient safety, and it did have things to contribute. You might not have contributed in all six of the competencies when you were trying to upload your information, but there definitely was um, a lot of information that a lot of information to be shared and a lot of activity going on. There was also a really neat willingness, not surprising to the CAPSI patient safety collaborative community, but certainly that willingness came out that people were willing to share their work across um, the, the the spectrum. And uh, we really felt that the collaboration, if we kept working on this, would benefit the providers, children, youth, and families, and even potentially lead to the standardization of care as you start to see how a given organization takes something like patient safety leadership rounds, um, then you could think about how you could roll that out um, in a standardized fashion. If you take a clinical practice, same thing. If there's an issue around high alert medications, then you can start to see that that would be standardized over time if you start to understand what is going on. Often when we have a question, we actually kind of contact Lisa, or we contact the CAFC office and we say, can you find out who's doing, uh, I don't know, uh, patient safety leadership rounds across the country, and they send out emails. And a, on a rather sort of hit and miss, if you catch the email uh, kind of uh, basis, we, we can find out the answers to our questions. By having the Knowledge Exchange Network, we're actually able to create this standardized place where we can go to to start asking those questions before we even have to take the questions any further. So. In phase one, we had a lot of energy that came out of it. What we did here, though, was that the safety competencies framework, while it provided a really practical lens, those six sort of boxes or puzzle pieces, through which to study patient safety, there were many overlapping concepts. So like we couldn't always agree which uh, competency we wanted to stick the various work pieces of work that we did. Um, and so, the competencies themselves were not always easily interpreted into the daily work language that we see on the front line. So learning at, a, at an academic level, um, it, was, it was easier to be at the 30,000 foot level when you're teaching the competencies, but when it actually came to translating the work that we were doing um, into those six boxes, it was a little bit more challenging. But still that didn't stop us. And we'll flip on, there you go. So, and it goes to show you that, you know, the, the words that we use and the, the actions that we take um, definitely have uh, a different impact at the front line with the realities of daily practice. Hey, he's followed the warning label. 
Okay, so then what we did is we said, okay, we got to make this a bit more um, translatable to the practice situation instead of academia. So this little sort of flow chart really talks about how we took the phase one data and what we wanted to do was move into a translational phase. And what we did is we actually mapped the CPSI domains and, and started to actually take something practical that we were all very, very familiar with, which was the accreditation ROPs, because that's how we had previously only been looking really at patient safety from a framework perspective. And we started to link the two of them together. And what we started to do was to further enhance or build that web-based resource. So knowing that the ROPs kind of provided a common language and certainly a common practice, because we all have to do that for an accreditation process, it started to bring it the CPSI uh, a framework itself and all the components to a, a more um, sort of tangible or realistic uh, way of looking at things. And we could start to say, oh, well, that's what that means. And we could start to understand it a little bit more. So what we're going to do now, and um, we, we really only gave you a screenshot when we were in um, Vancouver, is we're going to turn it over to Lisa, who will walk through it a little bit more, a little bit more slowly, and talk about the Knowledge Exchange Network, or the CAN, and um, sort of how it's used, and then talk a little bit more about the CPSI work that we did. Obviously work. Alrighty, so here we are at uh, the new uh, CAFSI website. Uh, it was unveiled at the uh, at the recent conference, so uh, hopefully uh, you've all had a chance to, to go see our new format. Uh, I think it's looking pretty slick. So we can get to the Knowledge Exchange Network uh, from here under our Tools and Resources. If it falls down, it does come under Tools and Resources. And straight from here. So welcome to our Knowledge Exchange Network, and we call him Ken. And uh, Ken is a wiki-based interactive online community, and uh, it was developed um, with a focus on sharing, growing, expanding, and creating knowledge for the child and youth health community. And its uh, real purpose is to facilitate uh, the identification and sharing of leading practices in um, uh, many different areas of child and youth health. And it was initially developed for the continuity and coordination of care of children with complex needs, but it really has expanded to include uh, many more categories and support uh, information exchange for all of these different communities. So uh, it provides simple tools to share knowledge and encourage the community to maintain uh, this sort of repository of very relevant information. So unlike a, a static website, it encourages well, it allows and encourages uh, timely revisions to content, and uh, it also encourages and allows interaction with the authors and the creators of the content. And uh, the community can provide feedback and work to improve the content because uh, it's always changing. So basically, we're a, a, a giant community of practice with smaller communities within. So this Ken community includes um, practitioners, administrators, policymakers, researchers, patients, and families. And there are, there's three levels of access. So the Knowledge Exchange Network is on our website. It is uh, a public, it's a public site. So uh, the first level of access is the public uh, access, which allows you to browse, search, and view. And uh, searching is uh, pretty easy on, on this if uh, you can use the search tool up here, and we have a tag cloud down here. So if you're just coming in with uh, sort of a not sure what you're looking for, it's like, oh, I'm interested in patient safety, you can, you know, put patient safety in here and uh, search. And it will bring up every article or every, um, every page that has something about patient safety mentioned in it. There you can just go back to home. You can either just click on the menu on the side or use the, um, the uh, arrow, the back arrow. So that's the first level of access is public. Now you can also become a, a member of Ken, and you'll be able to submit comments and join discussion groups. Um, the, the best and most uh, exciting 
um, level would to be uh, is to become an author so that you can create and share content you can lead discussions you can um, uh, react to the comments and other discussions and really the, the meat of it is improving editing and updating content and really facilitating collaboration of the community so you can see that there are a number of categories here on the uh, on the Ken. Uh, today we're just going to be looking at uh, two of those categories which are linked by the safety competencies. So we have the safety competencies curriculum on the go which I referenced earlier and um, the safety competencies challenge. So we're going from education to practice. So I told you before about the search feature so I'll just um, as we go through I'll, I'll explain a bit about the navigation. So we're just going to click on to the um, category that we want. And you can see the different pages that are available under this category. Um, so the background, we just heard about that. So we won't go through that too much. But you can see that uh, there's uh, many links to, to different information there as well. So again, we can just go back with the back arrow button and go to the meat of this, which is the curriculum on the go. Uh, as, uh, so as I mentioned before, um, it was uh, developed. This curriculum was developed to share through the pediatric residency programs. Uh, but if you take a look through it, there's so much that's transferable to uh, other professions, and uh, so you, you can see that um, we've we've organized it under each of the domains: the key and enabling competencies, the learning objectives, and the lesson plans. So I'm just going to hop right to the lesson plans because that's something that uh, might be of interest to everybody online. Um, so you can see domain one, contribute to a culture of patient safety. That's you know the, the motherhood overarching uh, component to all of the work. And so you can see that um, you know just culture, uh, we have uh, uh, adverse event reporting, epidemiology, of error, um, high reliability organizations. So this, um, these, uh, in each of these domains in this curriculum, there's a case study and a facilitator guide. And I really I invite you to take a close look at these uh, resources in this material because you might be able to tailor some of these um, uh, presentations to use uh, within your organizations, even you know as uh, you know faculty education. Um, so, as I said, in each domain there's a case study with a facilitate guide which links that story, that, uh, that case, to um, the safety competencies and all the, all the lessons that you might learn. So, as we talked about before, these safety competencies are being taught to all professions, um, but we, we want to know how it's showing up in practice at all of our healthcare organizations that uh, serve children and youth. So I'm just going to bring us back to home. And we'll go to the safety competencies challenge. So again, uh, Tracy, you know, described the background to you. And um, I'll just uh, hop right into uh, domain one. And so the way we approach this work was looking at the domain, seeing what was done on a regular basis at an organizational level uh, that supported the elements uh, of the domain, and we wanted to provide examples of those. So we have the key competencies listed, the elements, which are the knowledge, skills, and attitudes, and then we have some recommended actions. So we'll just go down to elements, and you can see, so a healthcare professionals who contribute to a culture of patient safety understand key patient safety concepts such as adverse events, close calls, no harm events, just culture. So just like uh, was being taught in the, uh, the pediatric residency curriculum. So recognizing, responding appropriately, working within limitations, demonstrating a questioning attitude. So these are all very, very important things. So we organized the database, all of all the processes, all of our giant laundry list of, of, of um, processes, practices, policies, we organize them um, into general recommended actions and these were then further um, broken down into key practices and um, 
for the key practices, we've tried to include examples from all those participating organizations. So we can see, you know, policy statements support safe, competent practice. And there will be more policy statements, I'm sure. This is just you know, sort of the beginning list. Um, so standards of care. So to support that, we have standards of care developed to include safety standards. All pediatric staff are familiar and accountable to them. Patient safety is articulated as a key strategic direction. Develop a patient safety strategy map. So if we, we, if we click on our little handyman here, it will bring us to the resources. So all of those um, key practices are again listed here. And you can also see that uh, we've linked those key practices to uh, a corresponding ROP if that, that's relevant. And then you can see that we have documents from the organizations that are related, that support that key practice. So if we look at something like development of a patient safety strategy map, you can see that, um, hold on, you can see in just a moment that uh, it links to the required organizational practice, client safety as a strategic priority. And those are the tests for compliance. And we have two examples here, and they both happen to be from, uh, from Nova Scotia. So the IWK kindly um, uh, shared their uh, strategic uh, mapping report, and they developed their uh, patient safety strategy map uh, before the safety competencies were, um, were published. Uh, but in the time since, they have been able to link the work that they've done back to the competencies. They don't have it uh, you know, on a document anywhere, but um, many of the concepts are the same. So you can take a look through this at your, at your leisure. But it's, you know, leading and learning, collaboration, safety environment, patient, uh, partnering with families. So they have uh, many of the same um, philosophies. So they did this before the safety competencies were, were published. And Capital Health uh, in uh, Nova Scotia did theirs after the... Um, based on the safety competencies domain. So it's just an example of, of how they've taken the work they do and, uh, and um, mapped it to the key objectives of the safety competencies and the ROPs as well. So this is another nice um, template that you might be able to use as you're, as you're building your safety strategy maps. So you have uh, two examples there of, um, of templates. So if um, I can show you um, some more, again, these are all, I think it becomes fairly self-explanatory. You can see the links to the ROPs. You can see many of the related documents. But you can also see that um, this is, is fairly well populated. We have some of the other domains that we um, would probably need, need more information for. So we would uh, request that you take a look at this and see where you fit in and uh, some of the um, information and the um, programs that you have happening in your organizations, uh, if you could lend examples. Uh, again, this is a resource to, um, it's a community of practice. So it's a resource for all of us to share, and uh, it's such a, a large country, and everybody's working quietly away in their corners, getting through their days, and um, working on the same things. So if, if we can share this load in this way, the CAN is a really, um, it's a really good example of how we can uh, share and learn together quite easily. So I could go through some of the other domains if you want, but I think that it's probably uh, something that you can do um, on your own time after. I can show you, however, how to register to become a member of, um, of the Knowledge Exchange Network. It's very simple. 
You're just going to click on the register button and you're going to fill in a form and we would request that you use your um, your organizational email if at all possible. It just makes it easier for us to identify you. So you're going to register there and you become a member and again as a member you can um, you know, you can view everything, of course, and submit comments and uh, join discussion groups. Um, but if you want to become an author, you will receive an email, a confirmation email, after you become a member, and you can request to become an author at that point. And uh, we will make sure that you uh, are allowed to author information. But for now, you can actually see most everything on the uh, Knowledge Exchange Network just in a public view, but the again, it's a community of practice, so its strength really is in everybody becoming members and uh, working together uh, to share this information. So I'm in uh, respecting the time, and we do want to have a bit of discussion. So I am going to go back to the uh, presentation. Thanks, Lisa, for um, that great overview. It's it's one thing, as one of the seven organizations that was actually trying to set up some of the background info, um, it's easy to get be, be down in the weeds. In fact, even if people haven't contributed yet, you could probably see yourselves, um, you know, relating to a lot of the stuff that has actually been posted there. But boy, it's another thing altogether to see, sit back and actually look at all that's available for us. So just a little quick recap, um, that curricula on the go, for those of you that are um, trying to uh, set up a patient safety program, you have access to presentations in there, the case studies and everything. Um, and as a, I think if you noted as Lisa walked through, everything from like a one hour session that you could offer to people to a, a three hour to a five hour session. So like there's so much information just to be able to steal shamelessly and as long as you acknowledge those uh, contributors, um, roll them out in your organization or take them and build on them. And then, of course, uh, taking the actual practice pieces and looking at what the seven groups in the original competencies challenge had actually uploaded, um, equally take what's down there, have a good look at, make some of the context if you need to, um, but then also look at um, some of the areas where you could contribute. And so I appreciate Lisa sort of taking a uh, second at the very end and showing you how to register. Not hard. So um, certainly you could become a member until you snoop around and have a look at it and then figure, you know what, if you want to share any information and would like to become an author, even better. Because the way this tool, I mean, so much work has gone into it, you can see that. But the way this tool is really going to um, take off for our community, our pediatric community, is if we all start working with it and um, using it on a regular basis, be it uploading information or actually um, uh, using the stuff in your own organization in their patient safety program. Mm -hmm. So we have a sort of an, a next phase of the challenge, which is to ask you to reflect your, on your organization's daily patient safety practice and take that and match it against some of those categories and start looking at um, how you can uh, engage your own team and, and possibly even use some of the material that's on the CAN or upload other information um, from your own patient safety plans. And then what we can start to do is to uh, really take patient safety to a whole new level as we start thinking about how we can start to even standardize things. But before I get too far down the road because I get excited about stuff like that, I guess what we want to do is take some questions and, uh, and have a little bit of a discussion. Because when the CPSI competencies first came out, we tried to sort of focus at a high level. OK, what, we'll, we'll make one of our collaborative calls about culture, or we'll make another collaborative call about reporting adverse events. But really, we want to get down into some of the meat of it and uh, not take it at 30,000 feet, but actually really start to look at specifics. So the first question I'd like, well, I'll put all three questions out there. and We can sort of have a bit of an open conversation on this in so much that Lisa can manage that through the, uh, through the, the, the uh, 
question muting and unmuting lines. But if we were to focus on the competencies this year on our collaborative calls again and reference the can this time, would there be an interest? So we could take the can and focus on competency one and focus on some of the information that's in there. Because that, if we use it throughout the year, then we'll start to be more comfortable with it. Um, and then we also want to know how we can actually encourage you to upload your own examples, and don't be shy. And um, we want to know how you can see your institution using the competencies framework and the examples uh, from the CAN on a go-forward basis. So those are the three questions. Um, as one of the co-chairs and the, therefore one of the planners of the um, the competency, the, sorry, the competency, the patient safety collaborative calls on an annual basis. I would be really interested to know particularly in question one, which is if we take the CPSI competencies again, but this time focused it with a reference to the CAN, what's been loaded in there and what also can be uploaded, uh, would there be an interest? So maybe let's just sort of start with that question, although anybody that wants to comment, by all means, if you want to comment on question three, by all means, don't, don't let me uh, limit the conversation in any way. Um, also, if you have any questions about the CAN in general, um, this is the time to uh, ask it, because if you're thinking that question, I can bet you that somebody else is thinking it somewhere across the country. So uh, Lisa, uh, has there been, a, and by the way, you can ask any questions uh, by uh, entering it into the chat too, and, and Lisa will be able to speak those questions up if she can't unmute your line. So yeah. give a second to think about it, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe look and see if there's any other comments that might be out there in um, in La La Land out there. Sure. So uh, right now there's uh, no questions in uh, submitted yet. If you also, um, I can try to unmute your line if you want to put up your hand. And I can try to unmute your line and uh, we can actually uh, speak to each other, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, or if um, anybody else, Elaine, did you have any comments that you would like to make at this time? No, I just, um, you know, I, I Lisa and I sort of, you know, or Lisa has walked me through the many, many steps that have been involved in building the, I'm going to say, the patient safety component of the CAN. And um, just, just like Tracy's comment, um, it, it's just um, I'm hoping people feel the, uh, the resource that is available to all of us. And there's so many... Um, ways you can use this. And I would again encourage folks to, um, to use Ken, to use the tools that are there uh, for education purposes, uh, clinical, um, uh, family sharing. Um, there, there's, there's so many ways that, um, and I think different uh, presentations and access to information that, that is there for you. Um, and again, feedback from our colleagues, from our member organizations and partners across the country is really what we need to hear um, to, to continue to improve this resource. Again, because it, it, it's for our members that, um, that we're doing this. Okay, I think I have. So um, from Tracy Northway, so BC Children's would be happy to work through competencies as outlined. We'd be happy to upload examples and have this opportunity to collaborate with our national feeds partners. So thank you, Tracy, Trish, and Rita. That sounds very uh, exciting to me. And I would gladly um, help walk you through all the processes. It's a pretty simple tool to use, uh, but we can take some time to uh, work together and uh, learn how to use the CAN. I, will also, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to also point out to everybody, which I should have, if you go to the general patient safety um, category, you can see that that's where we keep all of our um, previous webinars and presentations. So you can find them all there uh, to view uh, at a later time if you were unable to, uh, to, to be present. And uh, we also have uh, a, few other, uh, a few other interesting items on there as well. So sorry, go ahead, uh, Tracy. So my question was for BC and wanted to know, um, is there any particular competency that strikes you as more interesting uh, or uh, as a good place for us to start um, putting our own focus on the patient safety collaborative calls? Yeah, 
It's funny, Tracy, I was thinking that very, very same thought. Lisa, would it be possible to unmute uh, Tracy's um, yeah. line? Actually, I have, uh, I've got Rita can, uh, okay. okay. Rita, I've unmuted you. Uh, did you have something to say? And we're not hearing you, Rita. So let's try Tracy. Tracy Northway? Yeah, no, but I have to use this. I can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, good. How'd that work? <laughs> We're having trouble technically here. <laughs> good job. It's working. Yeah, all three of us are together. Um, okay. I don't that I think we're just happy to work through them in, in the process. There's not one that stands out to us more than the other. This is something we've been wanting to tackle for a while, and we've just been kind of lost. So this is great. That's good. That's terrific. Well, that's perfect. And oh, even yeah. as you go, even as you go along, if you do uh, sort of either figure out there's a gap on your end or something you want to know more about, don't hesitate to let us know. Um, specifically, uh, Lisa can probably handle the questions and, and we can try and move that to the top of the list. Because really what we're facing now is an open slate. We have sort of a, a year-long set of agendas that we can fill out and it's really up to the collaborative to shape what those calls look like. So we think that the competency framework and the CAN are a good place to start. So if anybody has the preferences, um, by all means, throw them out, and we'll focus on that first. Otherwise, we'll start at domain one and work our way through. So it's uh, really it's we want to know from the what the interest is. Yeah, sorry. and it's also a matter of maybe we've missed something too. That um, you know, working through it, maybe we've missed something, and you see that we've missed something. So is there something that we need to add? Yeah, is there a key practice that's that's uh, missing. Did you have anything to add, Tracy? No, that's uh, oh, the other Tracy maybe. Okay. <laughs> it's all about me, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this could get confusing. Um, I I talked to Lisa um, and Darlene at uh, CAFC around the patient safety education program as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Rita from Sick Kids and myself um, both are master facilitators for that program. So. I think we can probably bring in some of that curriculum as well right. in alignment with some of the safety competencies. Fantastic. That really, really is good. It's, it's Elaine. And I, I think, too, one of the things I'm thinking about, you know, as, as more people sort of expose themselves to CAN um, and, and use the resources and also share your practices, I, I think we may have, I hope we've stimulated some opportunities for future patient safety collaborative presentations as well, like on these monthly webinars. Um, and, and that's a great way for us to learn and share, you know, practices and, and models, if you will, that, um, that I, I know would be of great interest to many of our members. So I guess that's an open invitation to sort of come forward if there's something along those lines that you might like to actually take the podium and and um, and use our webinar series to share with colleagues across the country. So, uh, Carol Cook, you have your hand up. I'm going to unmute you, and hopefully you can ask a question or make your comment. Carol? Okay, Carol, we're not hearing, oh. So, Carol, we're not hearing you, so maybe if you have a comment, maybe just type it into the uh, question uh, box. So, and Rita from Sick Kids says they'd be very happy to participate. So, I'm just going to... Rita, I'm going to try to unmute you again to see if you had any other comments. And I guess the unmuting is not working today. Well, go ahead, Tracy. No, I was just going to say, just the fact that we know who's trying to communicate, we'll communicate back we'll, with you, yep. so not to worry. Yeah, for sure. Well. If there are no other questions, I don't know if Carol or Rita have managed to get theirs in. 
So no. we we could we could certainly um, we can take a moment and wrap up just two or three minutes early. We've done a good mm -hmm. job of, of uh, sort of doing a good introduction, and um, I think that on a go forward basis, if you hear a uh, notice during our collaborative calls that we're bringing back the can. Um, in the, as part of a feature of the call, then you'll certainly understand why, because this has provided a bit of the context to, as far as doing that. Uh, I do want to thank the seven hospitals that actually spent the time over the course of many months um, studying the competencies and uploading their information. Got to thank again Lisa, because boy golly, she's framed that in a, all that information on the can in a way that is very usable and a great place to start for many of us. Um, on behalf of the, the Darlene and uh, the CAFC office, I do want to thank everybody for their participation this morning. Do not feel shy in suggesting ideas that we can feature on the Patient Safety Collaborative on a go-forward basis. Um, we do want to uh, hear what you're up to and allow you the forum to share that information across the country. It's not an overwhelming task. There are lots of support from the CAFC and as far as uh, helping you do the presentation. So, um, and, and as you can tell, we're usually a pretty uh, um, friendly group to do a presentation to. So we'd just love to hear what you're out, up to, and we want to uh, encourage that uh, learning across the country. Tracy, I'm going to jump right in there because something just struck my mind. Sure. We have also recently launched a CAFC blog. And what Ooh. you just said in terms of sharing information with colleagues across the country, I would like to extend an invitation to everyone on today's webinar. If there is um, a blog, just information, uh, information sharing that you would like to put up on the CAFC site, you can do it directly. Um, and if you just have a quick peek at our new website, it's it's there for you to, uh, to, to view. Uh, in addition, we can also help you. If it's easier to just send us your blog, we can post it for you. So I just, you know, I just in the whole virtual world that we're building and opportunities to share information, I just want to throw that out based on what you just said, Tracy. Sounds good. And on that note, we will wrap things up. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we look forward to um, hearing you at our next uh, CAPSI Patient Safety Collaborative Call in December, and uh, um, have a good month.